Hello everybody. Now I'll try to open up this module 2 of this particular course. So in this module 2, I'll try to explain uh, this overview of the casting, welding and forming processes. So this in any manufacturing technologies, this casting is the is considered as a first step of the manufacturing process. And apart from this thing, welding and metal forming is also uh, to some is a consequence manufacturing process just we usually used for the to manufacture of a particular component. So here I'll try to give you some 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 basic understanding uh, of this manufacturing process. So uh, this not exclusively in details about the different techniques and technologies developed because for that purpose we have individual uh, modules. So here uh, will keep the very very uh, clear understanding what is the overall view uh, of this casting process, welding process and forming process and to some extent we try to introduce some kind of the mathematical aspect to understand this basic manufacturing processes. So, we will start with the description of the manufacturing process then uh, casting process and what are the uh, different aspects of the uh, casting process that in terms of the this uh, difficulties in, in casting process and what I can design to some extent. Then also we will try to explain the different oiling processes and forming and forming processes and uh, what are the metal forming is usually done that we will try to explain in this particular module and apart from this thing we will try to do some kind of the simulation or some numerical examples to understand this basic manufacturing processes. So, we, we know that any manufacturing process there are it is basically converting uh, from the raw materials into the finished products. So, that uh, actually passes through our several techniques, utilization of the several tools and of course, several measurement and of course, there are several techniques in between to get actual the finished product. So, in that aspect, we can consider what are the different steps of a manufacturing uh, processes that will start with the design and development. So, basically, we start with the design of the complete process and we try to develop further improve this particular process over the, uh, over the time. And <clears throat> that is the uh, once we done the design of this thing, development of the process, then we will try to select the material which material is basically appropriate or what kind of the manufacturing process or looking into this particular material so we can design the uh, manufacturing process or definitely development is the as a consequence effect of the any kind of the manufacturing process because over the time always development occurs then once we done the select particular material then we do process planning how to process this uh, material such that minimum time requirement will be there this uh, process like we can save the timing at the same time we try to maintain the quality of the uh, component. So, based on that we can decide the this uh, manufacturing process uh, planning to execute one particular material and with the help of the uh, available manufacturing processes. Once it is done process planning then we try to look into the production. So, basically what way we can do the uh, looking into this production that means if the number of components is very less or very high. So, based on that we can decide the different uh, production system. So, once we do, do, we do the manufacturing, we apply the manufacturing process then we try to look into the different components manufacturing and then look into the assembly of the different components to make a complete product or maybe I can say that uh, the finished product. So, in that case the assembly is the one of the important factor uh, to this thing. For example, we can we can consider as a, a, a example of a, a mobile. So, mobile there are so many parts, so many components are there. We can manufacture the individual components and then following the other design, maybe selection of the material, following the process planning and just look into the mass production system of a mobile component. So, once it is done individually looking into all the manufacturer components, then we try to make it assemble, make a complete product. So, after assembling, we try to look into the packaging and the basically make the packaging and the shipping for the distribution or for the sale of this particular component. So, if we see, we can see that there are so many steps associated with the different manufacturing processes, but our focus uh, of this particular module is to look into this uh, definitely we try to look into the 
Now, what are the different manufacturing processes? That means, of course, there are basic manufacturing processes. We have this uh, the casting process. We try to do the casting process and uh, the welding joining process and the metal forming process. These are the three basic processes. Along with that, there might be some uh, machining processes also to get the desired finish of the particular component. So, we'll try to focus on the manufacturing processes or manufacturing technologies in very specific to the material. For example, the manufacturing technologies can be different when you try to select the polymeric material and the manufacturing technologies can be different if you follow the metallic material. So, depending upon the type of the material, we can decide what kind of the manufacturing process. So, I will try to link overall the this is the type of the material whether metal overall we can say this metallic material or polymeric material and based on that uh, we try to describe the different casting while in the metal forming processes associated with the different types of the material. So, that is the basic objectives of this uh, particular uh, course or now uh, in this particular course now just looking into all this aspect of the manufacturing process we will try to focus on the very basic features of the casting process, welding process and metal forming process. Now start with the casting processes. So, we know that casting process is one of the oldest manufacturing process or I can say that it is the first step of the manufacturing process. So, in this uh, manufacturing process what we can do we, we can convert basically the liquid make it the liquid metal and liquid metal converted to the the solid component allowed to solidify and after solidification it becomes a solid component. So, that solid component can be made by with the help of the taking in the, the mold cavity and the mold cavity and that sometimes we need to some kind of the trimming of the certain undesirable component which is not the part of the this particular product or particular component and finally we try to look into the to clean the surface also to get the desired uh, component. So, these are the steps associated with the any kind of the uh, casting process of a particular material. So, once all we follow all these steps and finally we try to check we try to check it we try to inspect it we try to investigate whether there is any kind of the defects is available in the in a cast component or not that is the final checking of this component is usually done. So, so basic features of the casting process is basically associated with the first the one one particular aspect is the how to melt the material ok. So, because there are so many issues there are so many problems when you try to melt the material. So, in one example is that when you try to melt the material there is a possibility of the entrapment of the dissolving of the gas of the with the liquid metal and that when the entrapment of the gas in the liquid metal during the solidification it will try to create some kind of the defect. So, we have to be very careful what we are melting the component. Now, once it is the melt, then we have to look into how to get the shape of this component or of the product. So, to do that, we try to choose the particular molding of the material and molding shape we can see and then we make the mold and mold when basically uh, is a, the shape of the mold is, is basically the shape of the component or shape of the product we are looking for. So, then mold maybe you have to look into the if when you try to look into the mold then we have to look into the what are the mold materials. So, maybe what can be the shape of the mold is there any need any kind of the additional material to submit so that we can make a, the complete component without formation uh, without forming any kind of the defect. So, all this aspect we have to look into by choosing the mold material or how we have to look into also is there any reaction between the molten material and the mold material also. So, all this aspect has to be keep in mind when you try to design a mold or to select the particular material of the mold. So, this is all included in the analysis of the in a, in a casting process. So, anyway we will try to discuss in details about the maybe in some other module in details, but this is the point we have to be remember when you try to understand the, the casting process. Then another problem is that the solubility and the chemical reaction between the job and the mold material is that that point has to be looked into to select any kind of the mold material. Apart from this thing there might be some kind of the conductivity and thermal expansion coefficient of the mold material and the job material definitely it should be different the expansion and contraction for the mold material and the job material are uh, should be different. So, it actually decided by their thermal properties of the individual component. So, therefore, this because when there are 
change of the phase from liquid phase to solid phase during the casting process so in that case in this particular process there might be some kind of the shrinkage of the material from the liquid phase to solid phase so therefore to accommodate the shrinkage volume we have to take the some kind of the additional components in added in the casting process for example we have to use the some kind of the riser element in a, in a casting process so this aspect has to be very clear understanding associated with any kind of the uh, casting process apart from this thing when we do all this process in the open atmosphere there might be the possibility of uh, the reaction with the atmosphere so mainly it can form the oxides or maybe the hydrogen can be included in the molten material so hydrogen absorption might be there associated with the molten material so these are the these are the problem associated with the casting process but we need to address this particular problem or how to avoid this kind of the problem this is a part of the analysis of the any kind of the casting process or i can say the design of the casting process so we'll try to discuss up all these uh, aspects in this uh, in this particular uh, module now here you can look into very clear picture of the casting process and the steps in the casting process we can see you can see follow this figure first is there is a melting of the material so first we have to melt the material and of course once you melt the material and at the same time we have to look into just not to just melt the material some amount of the superheating of the material is also required because we need some time to pour into the mold cavity so when is the metal heating it becomes liquid the liquid to put into the mold cavity mold cavity is basically take the shape of the component so in within the mold cavity but before this there might be some time time gap is also required so we made some kind of the superheating is required such that it should not be solidified before pouring to the mold cavity so that point has to be uh, keep in mind so once we uh, put in the mold cavity within the mold cavity then it starts the solidification solidification is basically the transformation from liquid phase to solid phase so during that transformation there might be some kind of the defects is uh, may be associated for example that one is the problem is the associated with the this uh, shrinkage and that shrinkage might be create some kind of the cracking associated with the component so we have to take care of the uh, the solidification process such that we can avoid this kind of the defects so once we solidify that change of the phase from liquid phase to solid phase and further from solid phase at the melting temperature to the solid phase at the room temperature so that uh, has to reach so further cooling of the component then we get the product shape of the product and of course this product maybe we can take some additional material added in the product such that the to achieve certain surface finish of the product we need some kind of the uh, finishing process not only the surface finish also sometimes we can do some kind of the treatment post treatment of the uh, component to improve the certain properties for example to eliminate or to reduce the residual stress generation or to modify the microstructure we can do some kind of the heat treatment uh, process also so so that in general it is called the a finishing process so once we follow the finishing process in the component then we get the final shape of the component so these are the very basic steps but on the steps if you look into this thing the steps in the casting process in a in a very point wise manner here you see that first is the pattern formation and the mold preparation pattern is basically exactly the shape of the component we are looking for and the mold is the as a kind of cavity uh, that is a, that cavity the shape of this cavity is equivalent to the pattern so once we do that then we try to do this the melt the material and pour the molten material into the mold cavity so when you put the mold cavity there is a solidification follow solidification and further cooling to the ambient temperature it is followed so once it is done so then in that cases we we try to follow any kind of the defect inspection for the component so to i understand is there or to identify is there any defect or not in this particular component so once it is done then we follow the step that is called the Uh, any kind of the finishing process mainly the machining operation to just improve the surface appearance or the surface uh, finish or i can say the aesthetic part of this component we can look following the finishing operation so these are the basic steps in the in, in following the casting process and after that we'll get the one particular component now if you go in details about the on the casting process so we can simply say the preparation of the mold and the from the mold we can do the solidification and uh, cooling of the component but there are so many components associated with the one 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 casting process but i am 
talking about the sand casting process and this is mainly associated with the very large component and if you look into the sand casting process you see there are so many components if we see this the different names of this component we see that that one is the that one by one we can look into this component first we try to look into what is the flask f l a s k flask that holds the sand mold intact so that sand mold basically we make the sand mold and the all the sand mold we keep in intact and uh, which is and uh, made of wood for the temporary application or metal for a long term use so this uh, flask can be made of wood either wood or the metal and uh, for the application through uh, uh, over which we can hold the sand mold then we see the drag and cope drag in the lower molding flask so lower molding flask is the the drag and copper is the a uh, cope is the upper molding flask if here you can see the cope is the upper molding flask so lower and upper molding flask drag and cope then cheek in the intermediate molding flask used in the three piece molding if there is a three piece molding we make together and then try to assemble together then we need to some kind of the cheek also just to hold the uh, molding flux used in the three piece molding uh, process now once it is done the whole this thing then there is another part that is called the pattern pattern is a replica of the final object we are looking for so pattern can be made uh, uh, some in in case of pattern can be made in terms of the is the wood made of wax or the different kind of the pattern but it indicates the final shape of the component so once you make the pattern and in the which uh, this pattern is basically if we, we keep it within the uh, flax and then we fill the remaining part using the sand that the mold material then we once once we remove the pattern it will create that kind of the cavity so pattern is basically the size of the cavity is basically exactly equal, should be equal to the size of the pattern so pattern actually create the cavity and uh, cavity and this cavity is uh, hold by the mold material and the all the mold material is basically supported by the flux within the flux we keep all the the mold material so these are the basic steps associated with the preparation of the molding so there is another part that is called the parting line parting line is the dividing line between the two molding flask so that makes up the sand mold basically two molding flask we can divide in the parting line here you can see this is the parting line so these are the parting line is basically so that parting line divide between the two molding flask now there is also another part that is called the bottom board bottom board is basically made of wood and which is used at the start of the mold making so at the start of the mold making we put in the which is all all the setup can may, uh, put it on the um, and the uh, over a board and that is made of usually wood now if you see there is a other part also in, in this case uh, they see we have uh, here you can see this thing that uh, this is the sand mold the look into the following the figure also and is the parting line and also uh, if we, it is the sand and this is called the make outer part made of uh, this thing either made of the wood or either made of the metal that is uh, the flask and then apart from this thing there are uh, if you see the cope upper part is the called cope and lower part it is called the drag and it creates the mold cavity if you see the mold cavity is basically because of the we just remove the pattern from there that creates the mold cavity but this is the mold cavity this might be the shape of the exact component but we see there is a additional component also put you can see there is a riser put it we use the runner uh, with the gate also with the pouring basin these are the all stay all the components are part of a uh, complete casting system because these are the not contribute to the final component uh, of the final component we are we are looking for but this is also necessary part because here you can see there is a, uh, all are having certain purpose so pouring basin means this actually through his we can pour the molten material and it is passes through the gate basically the riser runner through the runner it passes through the gate and it reach the actual mold cavity once this is a mold cavity and there is also an additional there is a riser term is also used we use the riser also because riser is usually used to supply the molten material when there is a shrinkage in the 
mold cavity or the actual during the solidification there might be the shrinkage when it's changing the phase from liquid phase to solid phase so that shrinkage amount volume can be compensated by the the riser so that's why these are the needed additional parts which is needed the part of the uh, component although this is your the mold cavity is actually this is the actual final component or product we usually produce but these are the additional components riser runner gate pouring basin all the all the additional components associated with that we can see that other terminology associated with the casting process one is the molding sand we use the basically refractory material just to create the cavity um, mold cavity just to hold the mold cavity and of course with the silica sand and we use some binding ele element so some specific binding element we use the clay also and of course uh, to bound the molding sand now uh, there is a backing sand also made up used on the barn sand to mix up with the certain part of the mold we can make up use of the backing sand then is the core core used for the hollow cavities in the in the casting so core is uh, here you can see the core is the another term is the core uh, we can use so sometimes we can use the core also suppose in a casting component there is a hollow component part is there so to make the hollow component we can use the core so core is basically the size of the uh, hollow component is basically equivalent to the size of the core here now we see the pouring basin you see the small funnel type of the cavity on the top that is basically to uh, pass the molten material and the this thing that is called uh, act as a basin basically through which the we can put the molten metal and a sprue is there sprue is the passage through which the molten material passes and reaches to the mold cavity the runner also passage in the parting plane through which the molten metal is flow regulated before they can reach the mold cavity if you see this is the runner this actually sprue sprue is the this vertical part through is the liquid metal is coming here and then once it is uh, um, put here then coming to this one this particular component and then uh, after that it try to flow vertically uh, sorry horizontally and then to to reach the mold cavity so this horizontal part is usually called the runner and the vertical part is usually called the uh, sprue and then gate gate is the entry point through which the molten metal enters to the mold cavity so cross section of the gate is basically important and the, so that require the exactly what is the volume flow rate it goes to the mold cavity that is calculated by the cross section of the gate then sometimes chaplet is used to support the cores inside the mold cavity so sometimes chaplet is used just to support the core inside the mold cavity chills also sometimes is used to to modify the solidification process uh, basically or we can say the modify the cooling process rate of the cooling in casting process so sometimes we can use the uh, chills so chills is usually metallic objects so inside the mold just to increase the cooling rate so it is externally added the chilling uh, component is used as to modify the cooling rate during the casting process then we use the riser riser is basically act as a reservoir so just to compensate the material due to the shrinkage of the uh, mold cavity when during the solidification of the process so definitely riser should be able to supply the liquid metal when there is a shrinkage after solidification in a mold cavity so that is the purpose of using the uh, riser in in this casting process now once you understand that these are the very basic elements associated with the in a one casting unit now first step of the casting process is the melting of the material melting of the material and pouring of the molten metal so basically in a big stucker structure we usually use the commercial furnaces available for the uh, melting purposes for example we use the we can use the induction furnace we can use the cupola we can use the side blow converter these all are the kind of the this thing um, melting furnace okay or melting purpose we can utilize all this uh, component uh, to just to melt the material but each and every components or any furnace having certain certain limitation for example induction furnace it can the maximum temperature go up to 1750 degree centigrade it can produce cupola can reach up to 1650 degree centigrade and the side below con converter it can reach up to the 1700 degree centigrade so therefore just looking into the type of the material and their melting point we can choose the particular furnace to melt the metallic material but problem is that when you try to melt the material 
there might be some kind of the entrapment of the hydrogen and nitrogen during the melting of the material because once the melting temp the temperature increases the tendency to absorb the or to make the react with the atmosphere hydrogen and nitrogen is much more so that's why once it is try to react with the nitrogen and hydrogen then it create some kind of the defects in the cast component so therefore we have to be carefully we have to look this particular um, the issues associated with the absorption of the hydrogen and nitrogen at basically high temperature probably at the room temperature this is not a problem for the reaction with the hydrogen and nitrogen but when there is a high temperature we are melting the material at this high temperature this chances are the reaction tendency becomes much more with the hydrogen and nitrogen so therefore basically which usually the more problem is the entrapment of the hydrogen or solubility of the hydrogen at the the high temperature uh, along with the molten metal so therefore based on the solubility of the hydrogen we can consider the two group uh, one is the endothermic and another is the exothermic so endothermic we have this thing uh, aluminium magnesium copper the i think casting of the iron nickel all these materials it actually absorbs less hydrogen so but in this case solubility of the hydrogen actually increases with temperature so basically with increasing temperature solubility of the hydrogen actually increases for this particular uh, material so here you can see you can categories is as a endothermic material other cases the exothermic in this case this absorbs more hydrogen so in this case the absorbs more hydrogen that is the titanium and zirconium it absorbs more hydrogen that's why we, we can consider this as a exothermic material but in this case the solubility of hydrogen actually decreases with increasing the temperature so we can see these are the two different contradictory characteristics uh, between these two exothermic endothermic and exothermic material in pertinent to the hydrogen absorption now therefore we can see that uh, there is another aspect when the hydrogen absorption is there in the the high temperature hydrogen actually dissolves interstitially so we can try to take the interstitial positions in exothermic material and because interstitial position in the exothermic materials exothermic materials means this titanium zirconium they actually create the kind of the lattice distortion because it takes the interstitial position of the atoms now when hydrogen dissolves in the endothermic metal so endothermic metal means this aluminum magnesium iron nickel this is the common in this cases it will try to hydrogen dissolve in the lattice defects so lattice defects mean for the endothermic metal and actually lattice defects mean basically point defects or usually the the point defects line defects so in the presence of the defects it will try to accommodate the hydrogen try to take this particular position so therefore chances are much more, less formation of the defects is there is basically causes no defects when hydrogen dissolved hydrogen will try to take the position of the in the lattice defects position that means already defects is there that means point defects or the this thing so so that's why chances of the defects is much less overall but in case of the titanium zirconium it actually takes the position hydrogen will try to take the interstitial position so when you try to take the interstitial position you try to distort the surrounding atoms so it creates the kind of the lattice distortion so here there is a two different aspects when hydrogen dissolves in case of the two different categories of the materials and that we can explain in terms of the endothermic metals and exothermic metals in terms of the hydrogen dissolves in these two types of the materials in a casting process now overall we are talking about the hydrogen can is a more problem and during the casting of the component hydrogen dissolve but source of the hydrogen is basically the melt furnace dampness some kind of the oil presence of the air and the presence of the grease these are the source of the hydrogen so that's why we take uh, consider the the hydrogen the entrapment of the hydrogen is the serious problem during the casting process now how to remove basically if there is a if we try to remove the hydrogen what can be the process in principle the removal of the hydrogen is possible if if we try to reduce the partial pressure of the hydrogen so in that case partial pressure of the hydrogen can be reduced in principle then we can reduce the problem associated with the hydrogen uh, dissolve in case of the this in the casting process so here but what we can do improve the partial pressure of the hydrogen one is the simply bubbling of the dry insoluble gases we can put pass the insoluble gases through the melt 
and bubble pass so they will try to um, capture uh, they will try to dissolve the hydrogen in the in presence of the insoluble bubble gases so hydrogen can be removed this is the one way they can reduce the partial pressure of the hydrogen and hydrogen can be removed this simple way so other cases and the in for example in case of the non ferrous metals uh, in this case this nitrogen uh, chlorine helium argon uh, these are usually used we can used we can pass through this particular gas bubbles and in this case is just to reduce the partial pressure of the hydrogen and we to remove in, in case of and this type of the passing of the helium argon because this you know these are the react uh, non reactive gases nitrogen also react at but it's a very high temperature can be passes in case of the non ferrous metal when you try to do the casting of the non ferrous metal we can pass this kind of the gases argon helium chlorine and nitrogen then it is effective to remove the hydrogen by reduction of the partial pressure of the hydrogen in the molten material but in case of the ferrous metals we can pass the carbon monoxide co because it can it can remove both the nitrogen and hydrogen in case of the ferrous metal so we choose the different types of the gases bubbles for the two different types of the ferrous metals and non ferrous metals because this when these gases can be reactive some point of the things the reaction can be more serious in case of the uh, depending upon the whether it is ferrous metals or non ferrous metal that's how you can make the categorization of the two different set of the gas bubbles can be created to remove the hydrogen two different types of the materials one is the non ferrous materials another is the ferrous materials but of course if we consider the vacuum melting of the material then there is no point of uh, any kind of the defect formation in presence of the hydrogen and nitrogen so basically currently usually the vacuum uh, melting is usually used to just to control the uh, dissolving of the hydrogen and nitrogen or other kind of the gases during the melting of the material so once we melt the material then we think about how to pour the molten metal so once melt the material then pouring of the molten metal so if you see there is a pouring basin through the pouring basin we can put the molten metal in the pouring basin and pour through the pouring basin it comes through the sprue and then it's through the runner it basically uh, reach to the mold cavity now this pouring of the molten metal can be depending upon the uh, the simple mathematics we can we can see the designing of the getting design to different aspects one is called the it can be the top getting system another is the bottom getting system so here the the one cases we can use the no runner we can use the sprue and directly transfer to the liquid metal to the mold cavity this is one option this is usually called the top getting system pouring of the molten metal so in that case we can use the pour in the mold cavity so therefore getting design ensure distribution of the material without excessive temperature excessive temperature loss and of course there might be the less turbulence and might be the less entrapping gases all this you have to ensure the aspect of the to design the getting system so one of the uh, aspect is the top getting system here you can see that also uh, proper getting designs also design in such a that it should be uh, pre solidification should not happen because the solidification should start after reaching to the mold cavity so that has to be ensured so to ensure all, all this aspect then we can make a very good design of an uh, getting system but in other way also we can prevent the pre solidification just to simply too much of superheating to the molten metal because from the very high superheating temperature to the melting temperature it takes some time and that that time it will try to reach the the mold cavity so this is one option if it too too much of superheating then we can avoid the pre solidification but in other way if you look into too much of superheating also create the chances of the much more to mixing the different type of the gases the uh, surrounding gases with the molten material so it will create the chances of the defect formation due to the entrapment of the of the gases so this is the another so we have to make some some kind of the optimum design in such a way that to not to avoid too much of the superheating at the same time it should not happen the pre solidification of the molten metal before reaching the the mold cavity so therefore to want to try to look into we can find out some optimum liquid velocity so that uh, optimum uh, superheating temperature or optimum liquid metal velocity has to be looked into because if we take this gate if you take the two velocities too high 
then it can erode basically the erosion may happens at the when it is the liquid metal interacting with the uh, mold cavity. So, that can can also be look into the this particular aspect. So, too much of velocity the mold cavity may erode or some kind of the erosion might happen in the mold cavity. So, that we have to find some optimum velocity and optimum superheating temperature for a proper design of the getting system. Now, here we try to look into the vertical getting system, vertical getting system another which is also called the top getting system. So, here you can see that in this vertical or top getting system we see that this is the this is the molten material spore we can maintain uh, the constant height of the molten material and the liquid metal passes through heat and we maintain the atmospheric pressure and the and because it is open to atmosphere. So, at point A it will always be the atmospheric pressure and now second when is transferring to the mold cavity and this point is also open to atmosphere. So, definitely at point C also atmospheric pressure exists this thing and the liquid height also given H A and H B we can clearly here you can see this is H A and this is H B this is the liquid height of this material. Now and this is also height of the pouring cap. So, we pour the molten metal such that we can maintain the constant head and the pouring basin. So, that is the constant head of the liquid metal that is H C. Now, these are the parameters given therefore, we can see that uh, when you try to design, we look into the pressure at A and at pressure at C, both are atmospheric pressure. And of course, we maintain the constant this head. So, therefore, velocity at this point A, it should be 0. Basically, we may, since we maintain the constant uh, head in this case, that is why velocity will be 0. Now, if we apply the Bardinelli's equation, energy conservation equation between the 2.1 and 2 for a steady state situation. And of course, we are assuming the fluid is flowing either following a particular st steady state streamline uh, fluid is uh, flowing when you apply the liquid pouring the liquid metal on the top of the on, on the pouring basin. So, steady streamline flowing fluid we usually write the Bernoulli's equation between the point 1 and 2. We can say the 1.1 the what is the pressure head P1 velocity head rho V1 square and the static head of the liquid rho g h 1. Similarly, that should be equal to uh, p 2 at the point pressure 2, uh, point 2 this is the pressure at the point 2 this is the velocity head and this is the static liquid head. So, that should be equal uh, basically here we are neglecting the any frictional loss and all this aspect and we are assuming it is a steady state flow. So, this is simply implementation of the, the Bernoulli's equation between the point 1 and 2. Now, here the same thing we will try to apply in this in this particular problem. Now, at that at this particular problem we can see they apply this point here you can see the both are atmospheric pressure. So, this pressure term will cancel left hand side and right hand side at point A and point C ok and then velocity head also 0 at point A. So, that is also and velocity head will be there at point, point C and, and then static head we, we take this as a reference point this static head this if this is the reference point the static head at point a equal to h a but static head at point 2 and it means the point c it is 0 if we put all these things then we are getting g h a that only static head at point um, a point a and other terms are 0 already explained and the and the right hand side is the only velocity head uh, v c square by 2. If we do it and we are getting v c equal to root over twice g h a. So, here the velocity at point c uh, is proportional to the square root of the h a. So, I can say that v c is proportional to the square root of h a. So, it depends on what is the this height the velocity depends on this height. So, therefore, we can design it so what velocity are looking for the low and high velocity it depends on the square root of the h a. So, we can design that uh, this, this liquid height is very high then velocity will be also be high liquid height is less then velocity head will also be and the velocity will also be less. So, this is that way we can we can make some this kind of the conclusion from here. We can calculate what is the velocity of the liquid at the gate and then what is the volume flow rate. So, volume flow rate means in the velocity at the point C this is the velocity velocity it is following the velocity v and the cross section area is basically I say the a c. So, cross section area a c into v c it indicates the uh, volume flow rate that is called the q. So, in SI unit we can say that cross section area is the meter square and velocity is meter per second. So, therefore, it can be meter cube per second. So, per unit time what is the amount of the volume is flowing through this gate that we can simply calculate using this this formula. Now, 
if assuming that this is the total volume of the mold cavity equal to V and volume flow rate we have already calculated Q. So, therefore, we can easily estimate what is the time required to fill this mold cavity. So, this Tm equal to V by Q. We see the V is the volume in terms of meter cube and Q in terms of meter cube or volume flow rate second. So, which is equivalent to the second. So, therefore, we can estimate the what is the time required to fill the mold cavity easily uh, from here. So, this is the, the simple calculation, mathematical calculation for a vertical gate uh, system, vertical getting system or top getting system. We can simply calculate the what is the mold filling time here or of course, we can design it in terms of this can change the length uh, of the sprue uh, depending upon the what uh, we can looking about the, the, what, the velocity uh, at the optimum velocity at the point C here. Now, we try to look into the bottom getting system. So, in the top getting system, bottom getting system means here we are not directly supplying the molten metal to the mold cavity because what happens in the directly supplying the molten metal, so it might be some problem in the equal distribution of the, uh, the liquid metal in the mold cavity or it can create some kind of the turbulence also in the mold cavity and that is a, uh, that might be the another problem or it may create some kind of the erosion to the mold cavity. So, to avoid all this aspect we can do also bottom getting system. So, here we can put the liquid metal from the top basins and gradually it is passes through the sprue and it is a basically temporarily storage store here in this particular cavity and uh, here we can make some kind of the, the we address uh, this particular uh, shape of the um, of this uh, system such that it will try to uh, avoid to some kind of the erosion at the at this at this bottom so therefore basically release of the kinetic energy of the liquid metal at the bottom uh, we can make this particular shape so once it is done then we can gradually pull more smoothly the liquid metal through the runner and it is it is filling the mold cavity from the bottom head so from the bottom head if you try to fill the mold cavity so the chances of the turbulence will be less in this particular case and uh, and gradually um, in this case so that's why here the or there is no direct erosion of the mold cavity in the in, in this particular uh, system so therefore these are the advantage as compared to the vertical getting system but how to design this uh, in this uh, system or what we can calculate the mold filling time uh, for this system that also we can see here. So, here bottom getting system we see the Bernoulli equation between point A and C we can pick up the between A and point C and assuming this point C is the inside the runner point C is not in the mold cavity it is inside the runner. So, in inside the runner part. So, therefore, if it is like that then we can see the G H A that means this other part this at point A this pressure head and the velocity head. So, pressure head and velocity head we can neglect here because pressure head is the atmospheric pressure and the velocity head also 0 because we maintain the constant pouring the constant liquid height in the pouring basin. So, that is why velocity uh, kinetic energy due to the velocity head is neglected here. So, here we say G H only the static head and this is the reference line the this is the reference line. So, with respect to that H is the static head G H. Now, at point C we see the it is not the atmospheric pressure. So, with reference to the atmospheric pressure we can say the PC is the gauge pressure at the point C. Gauge pressure means the absolute pressure minus the atmospheric pressure it represents the gauge pressure. So, that is this gauge pressure we calculate with reference to the atmospheric pressure. So, that is why what atmospheric pressure this side is the here uh, we can bring to the right hand side and take this as a so, absolute pressure minus atmospheric pressure is depends in the gauge pressure at point C. This is PC by rho L pressure head and this is the velocity head at the point C. But remember here point C which is uh, assuming the inside the, the runner not inside the mold cavity. So, here pressure gauge at C uh, rho L is the density of the molten matter. So, from he equation we, we get this equation. Now, if we apply the this uh, the Bernoulli equation between the point C and D. So, here point C and D. So, here you can see the between point C and D this way the point C we have the this thing points D. Uh, the, we take this as a reference up to point D we have the static liquid head height equal to H. So, H is say one particular time this is the height H. 
so here you can see this is the so that's why we use the static head gh but here we are using the right hand side we can see uh, this okay between c and d uh, gh is the static head and this is the pressure pressure at the point c c by rho l by neglecting the kinetic energy at uh, c and d here we can neglecting the kinetic energy because d is moving very slowly so at the point here the, the liquid velocity is very low here therefore at point d we can neglect the kinetic energy and another point is that at point c when we consider the point c inside the mole cavity so suddenly there is a expansion of the uh, runner to expand at the very big area okay so our very big volume it just suddenly exposed to the very big volume so big area so therefore we can see that we can neglect the kinetic energy at the point c also so once we do neglecting this thing and point c uh, bernoulli's equation between point c and d we can get g h equal to p c by l p is the pressure head now if we put this value in the here g h this equation and from here we can get this equation the velocity v is equal to square root of twice g h a minus h so here we can getting the this expression what is the velocity v c at this point the velocity equal to it depends on the difference between the h a minus h is the velocity at point c now we try to estimate what is the the at the time of uh, what is the mold filling time in this case so suppose at particular time dt there is an increment of the liquid height equal to dh about the height h so this is the increment of the liquid height equal to dh at time over the time dt and here this cross section area of the mold the normal cross section area this cross section area of the uh, of the mold so normal mean this area of the mold is am now if you follow the volume flow rate as a constant therefore we can see that am into dh so one particular time dt am is the cross section area we know the cross section area am into dh is the it is indicate the volume flow rate increment of the volume flow rate and that is equivalent to the what is liquid metal is supply over the time dt through the gate c so through the gate c the ac is the cross section of the gate and vc is the uh, volume okay so and vc is the volume so then ac into vc represent the uh, this volume flow rate here multiply by the over the time dt this is the total volume passes over the time dt so that should be equal to the what is the total volume rise over the time dh uh, with respect to so therefore am dh equal to ac vc into dt now we use the equation 1 equation 1 this one equation 1 is this one v is equal to what uh, this equation we can use it we see here and using equation 1 and here we put the equation 2 also we reach this expression dt and this expression equation 3 now at time t equal to 0 h equal to 0 so we started that filling time at time t equal to 0 t equal to 0 h equal to 0 because at this point and once after time assuming the total mole filling time equal to tf so one tf time then it will reach at time tf it will reach to the height equal to total hm here so hm so therefore make the integration 0 to tf the time dt and 0 to hm is the variable h we perform the integration this one and we are able to get the tf equal to total mole filling time this is the it depends on the cross section area of the mole cavity and cross section area of the gate and uh, the height of the liquid and the uh, at the particular uh, uh, ha and square root of ha uh, ha minus uh, this I, I think it will be hm here it depends on this ha ha minus hm so where tf is the mole filling time so we can easily calculate what is the mole filling time for the bottom getting system we can take an example also for the getting design so here we see that bottom top and bottom getting system with the for a mold of uh, this thing 30 centimeter 20 centimeter 10 so 30 20 and 10 dimensions is given in the figure the cross section area of the gate equal to 7 7 centimeter square this cross section of the gate calculate the mole filling time for the both getting system so here you can assume the top getting system from the top liquid metal is supplied and here is the bottom getting system from the bottom liquid metal is supplied in these two cases all dimensions are given we can calculate uh, using what we have discussed this thing calculate the this h a value a g cross section area h m also given so here v c you can calculate twice g into h uh, in this case 
and we found out that this thing because h remember h equal to here this is the 14 centimeter here and this is the liquid height liquid height before entering the mole cavity so here it is 14 centimeter so here i have used the 14 centimeter here we get the velocity this is the open getting system and we calculate the mole filling time tm v by ag into vc we can calculate the 5.17 second we can do the calculation like that now in case of the bottom getting system so here you see that uh, ha 2 into square root of ha minus root of ha minus hm we see the similar calculation we can perform hm also given uh, this uh, 10 centimeter hm the height of the this uh, mold and the uh, this 14 centimeter also this 40 centimeter the height of the this from the pouring basin to the where the metal is entering uh, 14 centimeter here you can see be careful how to utilize the uh, here they use the ha here ha is the from here to this this part in case of the bottom getting system but in case of the top getting system it is ha is the up to this part the, from here to this part this is the ha so here you can see the ha are different in these two cases top and bottom getting system you can put it and we are getting this value is 6.74 second so here you can see that almost all the similar data but in these two cases the the mold filling time are different so basically we can say that bottom getting system is the taking much more time to fill the mold cavity but thing is that although it is taking much more time so therefore for bottom getting design your superheating of the metal liquid metal should be much more as compared to the top getting system that is one point because it takes more time to fill the mold cavity second point is that bottom getting system is the more stable which creates the less turbulence to the liquid metal when it is filling the mold cavity so that's why it is advantageous although it is taking much more time as compared to the top getting system there is another aspect associated with the getting system that is called the aspiration effect. Aspiration effect is the when we are showing the calculation basically we are we are trying to focusing on the what can be the absolute pressure or gauge pressure or we are trying to look into whether there is an atmospheric pressure at least it is maintaining the atmospheric pressure throughout the uh, system that means throughout the runner throughout the pouring basin throughout the riser and throughout the this thing mold cavity it should maintain at least the atmospheric pressure so now it may happen so if you do cannot do the proper design of the runner and riser there might be the possibility of the some kind of the the pressure might below the atmospheric pressure in the getting system so when it is the below the atmospheric pressure the, that means negative pressure so in that case is probably it will cramp or maybe it will create some kind of the defective design of the casting system so somehow we have to ensure the design should be closer or geometric shape of the different sprue or runner riser in such a way that it should avoid the negative pressure that means the the pressure less than atmospheric pressure so that we can prove this thing just in doing some simple calculation we can see what can be the shape of the uh, the sprue to avoid any kind of the negative atmospheric pressure for the design of the the casting system now simply you can apply the Bernoulli's equation between point B and C. So here between point B and C we can apply the Bernoulli's equation we see GHB this is the height the liquid metal at point B this is the static liquid head this is the pressure and this is the velocity head and but at point C there is no static head zero because this we are taking this are the reference line. So the no static head velocity head equal to this and this is the pressure head. Now I assume P C equal to 0. So assuming at point P C equal to 0. So if it is P C equal to 0, then we can see the P C equal to 0, then it can reach that this can be the if it is cylindrical, uh, then V B equal to V C. If you take this is the cylindrical shape. So cylindrical shape means the velocity at point B and velocity at point C is the same here in this case. So V B equal to V C. So P C equal to 0 and V B equal to V C, we can get the P B at the point B it becomes minus of rho LGA so here we can see that if we consider this is cylindrical then we can get the negative pressure at point B so therefore the cylindrical shape is not actually not recommended because if you take the cylindrical shape of calculation shows that negative pressure may uh, will be there at point B so therefore we have to make the shape in such a way such that we can avoid the negative pressure so but at what we can say the about the negative pressure uh, therefore in this case we can say that 
PB gauge pressure should be zero. That means the pressure equal to zero means we are telling the gauge pressure uh, should be with reference to the atmospheric it should be zero. So that means the it is it is maintained at least the atmospheric pressure. Now, if you say that at least the atmospheric pressure, we can say that PB equal to zero. The gauge pressure equal to zero means the atmos only atmospheric pressure exists at point B. If this is the situation, we say the PB equal to zero. In equation five, we can see that GHP and uh, VB square equal to this equal to atmospheric pressure, the atmospheric pressure will be there. So, pressures will be the same. Maintain the atmospheric pressure VB square equal to VC square by 2. So, here you can see that VB square minus VC square equal to twice GHB. Once it is done, we can see that from continuity equation, the equation it should be maintained should be followed because here at point VB, this is the velocity and point AB, this is the uh, material volume flow rate and here AC point cross section and BC that should be maintained. So, just to maintain the it is a basically we are getting the from the continuity equation. So, that should be maintained. So, once you maintain and assuming that the ratio from here you can see that VB by VC equal to AC by AB. So, assuming that this equal ratio equal to R. Now, if it is this is the case therefore, we can get the VB square minus VC square twice GHB from here we can calculate that VC square and equal to Vc square equal to uh, in terms of the R and the Vb square equal to Vb equal to Vc into R. So, here you can see the Vc, Vb square Vc square into R square from here you can say that Vc square 1 minus uh, R square and um, equal to twice GHB and here from here you can say the R square equal to uh, 1 minus okay, twice GHB by Vc square and R equal to we are getting in terms of the HB and, and VC and VC means here the open of VC square equal to twice we have already given twice G H A see H A was this one is the H A and this one is the H B. Now if we do that H A by H B so finally R equal to uh, root over of H C by H A because uh, here you can get the square root of H A minus H B by H A. So, H A minus H B is basically H A minus H B it is basically equal to the H C. This is the H C here. So, H C here. So, square root of this is equivalent to H A minus H B equal to H C by H A. So, here H C by H A square root of H C by H A. So, which is also R also equivalent to R also equivalent to AC by AB. So, AC by AB. So, AC by AB square root of AC by HA. So, therefore, if you look into this equation, this is actually parabolic sprue. It actually shape of the uh, sprue should be parabolic in nature. In, in, in mathematical calculation, so says like that it should be parabolic in nature. But of course, construction of the parabolic shape is difficult. So, therefore, we avoid this thing. Uh, negative pressure we can say that instead of the ideal situations it can be this parabolic shape but we can say in the ideal uh, actual manufacturing is the more is the tapered the sprue the tapered sprue is the more feasible here to avoid the this uh, aspiration effect or to avoid the negative pressure inside the in, inside the sprue so therefore if you look into the uh, design aspect we should follow we should manufacture the this tapered sprue associated with the in, in a casting process. So, that we can uh, here we can uh, easily explain this phenomena through simple mathematical calculation. Now, overall if we look into see the getting design is something like that we see in a casting process and the basically I am doing the mold sand mold casting process then is the very large casting sand large sand mold casting process. Here the typical component of a getting system is that the getting system is like that it is having the pouring basin so liquid metal some kind of the strainer is there and it is also the at the end it is the splash core is there and there is a some skim bob is there in the top and the bottom and then after that it reaching to the mold cavity of course we can see this is kind of the most feasible the uh, bottom uh, getting system but these are the typical component of the getting design we have to look the pouring basin strainer splash core skim bob we see that what the role of all this individual component
So basically pouring basin why we can directly pour the liquid metal into the mold cavity but why we can put the pouring basin because pouring basin acts as a reservoir and then directly if we put to the mold to the liquid uh, this the sand mold then it create the erosion. So it is better to keep the liquid metal in the pouring basin and from the pouring basin to gradually supply to the, the channel supply to the this basically sprue. So therefore the purpose of the pouring basin is basically reduces the eroding forces of the liquid metal stream and that is coming from the directly from the furnace. So a that but we pour the directly pouring from the furnace but we try, always try to maintain the constant pouring head uh, maintain using a pouring basin okay. Then we put the strainer also ceramic strainer we can put it passes through the ceramic strainer because uh, in the strainer we can remove the dross basically the dross in the any 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 sand particles all this thing comes with the liquid metal that can be strained by applying the strainer and after that it is passes through the splash core. Splash core is the ceramic splash core is usually used at the place at the end of the sprue because it actually reduces the eroding effect when the liquid is directly passes through the this flow because it is having certain velocity. So when the certain velocity liquid is coming here, so when you use the splash core, it actually try to reduce the kinetic energy of the liquid metal and of course at the same time it saves the reduce the erosion effect of the uh, of the liquid stream. So that is the purpose of using the splash core. So when it is done splash core the we can reduce the kinetic energy of the liquid metal then we use the another passes through this the uh, the runner here we put the two skim bob it is the basically trap trap is the to trap the lighter impurities and the heavy impurities uh, which is mixed with the liquid metal. So in the top side is put the lighter impurities captured in the upper side the skim bob and bottom side skim bob it is basically heavier impurities is actually captured here in, in this case. So once it is captured the lighter and heavier impurities then almost pure uh, material is passes through the runner and reach to the mold cavity and of course the kinetic energy of the mold cavity is relatively less here what was there here because if you see when you, with the shape of the we already explained that shape of the this uh, sprue should be tapered it is not be containing the cylindrical element. So when it is tapered, so at the, the liquid velocity at this point will be less but liquid velocity at this point will be more because just to maintain the continuity equation uh, associated with this uh, flow of the liquid metal. So that is why when is the velocity is much more here, so somehow we have to put something such that this kinetic energy of the liquid jet has to be reduced here. Uh, so that job is done by the splash core and then kinetic energy release then relatively low velocity it is passes through the uh, this thing runner and then finally reach the mold cavity finally it reaches the mold cavity. So these are the typical getting design associated with the any kind of the uh, this casting process. I think all this aspect will helps to understand the different aspect of the uh, casting process. So I think that is all and thank you very much for your uh, kind attention.